Welcome, everybody. We're excited and kicking off day one of the festivities here at Money Fest. I'm here joined on this keynote chat with Jill Castilla, President, CEO, and Vice Chairman, Citizen Bank of Edmond. Jill, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Ryan. It's so good to see you. Likewise, you know, you've been in the forefront and many of these discussions right now. You've been really busy since, I mean, more so than ever, especially with the pandemic, when you talk about the discussions you've been having, the small businesses, PP loan, PPV loans, with the SBA, and you even got Mark Cuban to even tweet at you. Um, I know we'll talk a little bit about that, but I, I kind of want you to explain something to the audience because you and I had a great conversation and you mentioned to me that you've taken this role of seriousness of economic first responders during times of crisis, specifically, you know, COVID. Can you kind of elaborate a little bit more for the audience? Well, certainly. I mean, COVID-19 has presented challenges like no other. And we're a small community bank, just one location in central Oklahoma, 55 team members, 120-year-old institution, really a traditional community bank. Um, and But in that role, we're really called upon to be leaders in our community, whether, whether we like to do that or not. And as the country was um, heading towards this crisis, we were on, you know, right on the battlefield, on the front line, seeing the impact and the potential impact to our small business community in particular, and then also our families and, and consumers that were um, waiting for stimulus checks, knowing that this was hitting the, the amount of food that they could bring to the table. And so that's what resulted in our first partnership with Mark Cuban, which started, as you mentioned, on via Twitter, a post that he did, and then ultimately another partnership with him to launch PPP.Bank um, to get a forgiveness tool to our small businesses so they could get access to grant funding. But we really, um, to motivate our staff, um, we really were uncertain. Everyone had their own personal anxieties about what the, um, what the crisis was going to mean to them and then what it was going to mean to our institution. And we really want us to be able to focus, as we've done for 120 years, to um, help our community, to be here to help. And so we saw our medical personnel rushing to the scene of the crisis, looking you know, to treat the, the virus, to, to understand how it spread, to communicate that effectively. And then we saw ourselves and were able to communicate to our team that we're economic first responders. We have a duty of care and we may not have all the tools in our tools kit that exist in the way that we're supposed to always use them to address this crisis. So what tools do we need? How do we advocate for those tools if we need them from DC or from the regulators? But what do we have that we can use in a different way? We talked a lot about being MacGyvers um, and banking because uh, we're small, we don't have a lot of resources, but that doesn't impede our ability to be creative. And the greatest innovations come in, in, in wartime efforts when you look at the battlefield, but also in these times of crisis because you're needing to apply the tourniquet to the, the, the devastating wound. Um, but you may not have the, the, the tourniquet available, so you improvise with a stick and a piece of cloth. And that's really what this, this economic first responder um, philosophy was about, was let's use the tools that we have, let's be as flexible as we possibly can to help our customers through this time of need, understanding that not only our customers are hurting, this is really a national um, crisis, and we need to communicate and broadcast what we're doing and what others are doing, connect like-minded individuals so that we can uh, reduce the amount of economic devastation resulting from COVID-19. Well, I love the fact that you brought in MacGyver because I think what you, you know, what you talk about small banks and having less resources, that doesn't stop you, right? And I think part of the message you just mentioned is, you know, small banks typically, you know, are worried about the communities, but you took it to another level. You took it to another level, to a national level and being really vocal. And, it, you know, I may be clear, those who have, don't follow Jill, you should. It wasn't like she just, you know, Mark Cuban reached out. Jill may, could tell her passion around this. And so I, I call that out. I know we kind of laugh about Mark Cuban uh, tweeting at you, but can you tell me the innovation, right? I mean, you, you touched a little bit about innovation in this realm, but what things that you learned that I don't think will go anywhere, even the learnings from pandemic and moving forward, what are the few things that you, you've you learned from this crisis that you know that, you know, maybe other people should be focusing on in the future? Well, I think it really speaks to that um, you have to plan and continue to always invest in 
being prepared for a crisis, being prepared for the opportunity, be prepared for the challenge. So when it comes, then you can take those tools that you prepared for to apply them, but also then have the room for creative ways to develop new things as a result. We had um, just applied for a patent and had executed the deployment of kind of bank in a box or a boat, small business bank where small business could access um, bank services with their, with their phone, physical bank services. Um, make cash and deposits, do change orders, withdrawals, large coin deposits, roll coin withdrawals. And we had, we had already been planning and had deployed that and applied for our patent. Well, when we found this crisis with the branch closed, we found that, man, this is really needed right now. We were able to quickly deploy another site to allow our small businesses access to bank services that would normally be required to do in person. So you have to really be prepared to be able to execute what you think um, is so serving a need, but whenever you're really called to help, then you can amplify either the reach or um, increase the sophistication of what you're offering. And the collaboration with uh, Mark Cuban, you know, that was hundreds of emails and interactions on Twitter and thousands of interactions that we were having, both of us, with small businesses that really what could have been seen as a small problem in a community or with certain small business owners, but social media gave us access to understand this is a systemic issue in our country that has to be addressed and we weren't able to have an effective way for the SBA to marry up um, PPP lenders with um, small businesses in need of those funds. Many of them did not have access. So I was playing matchmaker on site, uh, on online, on, on Twitter. But then Mark saw that and said, okay, we need to have more of a system in place to help in the forgiveness because this complexity of the loan program going into the forgiveness and grant piece of it is going to maybe even be more devastating the the actual and beginning of the crisis. So um, it, you know, the, in, the innovation is hard work all the time. Um, I think the scarcity of resources, I, I don't know if I would have it any other way. We do not have deep pockets. We don't have a development team. So it's a non-traditional way of innovating when you look at fintech, but it's the traditional way of innovating and how businesses have always filled customer needs, anticipating that and rushing to the scene of the crime or the scene of the need. Um, and that that scarcity really helps you be MacGyver. You know, you got the stick of gum and the paper clip you're able to put together and defuse the bomb. And that's certainly what was happening in this crisis. What tools do we have to help immediately? What tools do we need, more sophisticated tools do we need to advocate for? What flexibility do we need from the regulators to be able to serve in this economic first responder role to come to the aid of our community without um, exposing harm to the banking system? Well, first off, next time in Oklahoma, I, I, I want to invite to come see this, the new innovation that you've got going on. <laughs> and, you know, I think that what you mentioned about I, I mean, those who are listening to you, I know that this, you may not say it, but there is a word of frustration uh, that all the work that you've been doing that it hadn't been done, right? When you're playing matchmaker ad hoc and, you know, I, and, and now kind of having some kind of system, what does that say about the ecosystem moving forward? You know, like you mentioned, it's already hard enough to be a small bank and you have less resources. Yes, you can get it done and maybe you're at a little bit disadvantaged at times, but what does that mean for the ecosystem maybe moving forward or what do you see? There are so many bankers out there and fintechs that really get that we are here to serve the customer. They're make their pay our paychecks. So the reason our banks exist and we have to make sure that we have unparalleled accessibility. And when we think about the future of banking, we can talk about what kind of products and services that, that consumers are expecting or that we could see that um, the, this kind of star track of banking in the future, what that looks like. But really what it is, is customers and the public needs accessibility to banking services and how do we simplify that? And this crisis really showed that we don't do a good job of, of amplifying like what is available for a small business that's in need right now that's in a critical moment. And um, fortunately, we have social media and other ways, great networks of fintech friends. They're able to really um, have an effective way of connecting with another kind of the old fashioned way, but utilizing um, the electronic media, digital media to make sure we get the moment out. But certainly, I think it shows that we need to improve. There's so many great resources around the country that were made available. We partner with Tesla, a fintech company who use donate the resources free of charge to um, come up with PPP.bank in 10 days from the time that uh, Mark Cuban kind of pitched me the initial idea and that we were able to get that executed. 
Well, that's great. You know, I know we're running a little bit out of time, but I want to ask two more things. One, what are the top three things of call to actions that you maybe want to, that you would want to share to the audience and those in the industry? Yeah. So, man, that's a big question. So, <laughs> I, I, I have a. I'm not giving you very much time. <laughs> and, and, and the, but my mantra really is to be genuine, be accurate, and be positive. And I think as an industry and as uh, payment providers, um, if we can do those three things, we will serve the customers well. And um, to know who they are, who we are, you're able to then connect like minded, which came up with PPP.Bank, was really forces coming together in a very short period of time. We're really focused on how do we um, meet the needs that, that we don't even know, that the customer doesn't even know exists right now, but that we can anticipate being a need. And let's, let's make this happen to have the call to action. So being genuine, being accurate, being positive, and then all of that in the realm of accessibility, make yourself ridiculously accessible, whether it's from a digital standpoint or personally putting yourself out there. And that's key, right? What you just said is to be accessible, not just face to face, but digitally. And I think, you know, that's a great lesson. And, you know, I want to end on, on something like this, you know, I know we didn't talk about this, but, you know, just hearing you, I, I, I want to kind of play this little game, you know, fill in the blank. The future of fintech is? Unimaginable. I think that we, I, love- I think that we don't know where it is and that that this crisis is really called that we can't say where we're going to be in 10 years ago, 10 or 10 years from now, because we don't know what that is. And so we have to keep everything open, all the possibilities available so that we know we're always running to solving the customer need, to solving the crisis, to to creating more possibilities for the future. Well, thank you, Jill. Love the insights. This is fantastic. You know, we're gonna we're gonna take some questions now from the audience, um, and and we'll uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> 